first got hurt, all I could think about was all the outdoor activities that I just couldn't do again. Today, I'm here in South Texas with a Disabled Outdoorsman USA showing the world what we can do. I'm here with TJ and Weston. Weston is the founder of Disabled Outdoorsman USA. The so Disabled Outdoorsman is an organization I actually started after my cousin TJ DePierre, who has a shins muscular dystrophy. TJ has the mentality that many share across the United States. Their therapy is the outdoors. So Disabled Outdoorsman is here to make that possible for everybody that's disabled in the United States of America. TJ, I've been uh, eyeballing your truck over here. Think we can go take it for a ride? Yeah, let's go take it for a ride. DJ Shelby Raptor, about to go do some donuts. Yeah, let's do this. Vroom, vroom, baby. TJ, this was super sick. Thank you so much for taking us out. Never seen anything like this. This is unequivocally Texas. So a lot of you guys are in the comments and always asking me to do videos with other persons with disabilities that are not just paraplegic spinal cord injury guys that are in manual wheelchairs. So um, I know for me personally, whenever I interact with a new person with a disability, I never know um, what to do and how to act because I know every person with a disability has their own intricacies. So TJ, tell me, what are some of the, the, the common misconceptions you get or what would you like people to know when they see someone who looks like you? I hate a person with like that. It's a verbal way. I don't expect it. Can't like communicate or just stuff like that. Do you ever find that people will will talk to Weston and ask Weston questions? Yeah, like, ask questions about like people that are with me instead of like communicating with me because they're afraid they're gonna say the wrong thing or not to have to like communicate with me. That's just, yeah, I can definitely understand. I think it's it's common for just in general as human beings to kind of be afraid of what we don't know. You know, whether that is someone of a different race, if that's someone with a different body type, if that's age, you know, we're just like, I don't know what's going on here. Like, I'm just a regular guy. I'm just sitting down. I'm like, just like treat me like I'm just a regular dude. Like I just, I'm just sitting. You obviously have a little bit different than I do, but do you, do you also relate to that? Just because I got a power chair and I've got something breathing for me doesn't mean I'm not just a regular dude. But you can like talk to me. And you don't have to ask everybody. Just ask me. Like, I, I like that. It's like quit asking everybody else around me. Ask me. <laughs> So one of the things that attracted me the most to the Disabled Outdoorsmen was their approach to finding the solution to getting guys like me outside. And the three barriers that we tend to find is accessibility, access to adaptive equipment, and cost. With TJ, he has the adaptive equipment already readily available, so that makes it a lot easier for us to bring people, you know, such as yourself, down to make it accommodating for them as well. So his trucks, you know, his Polaris's, the bathrooms, the hallways, they're wider, the bathrooms are accessible. So really, you know, the cost of the startup is already there for us. And so we have the resources that we need and let them enjoy what TJ has, you know, been able to enjoy for so long. Them being a nonprofit and having merchandise sales, they have the ability to take care of you. All you have to do is just get down here. So once you're here, it's a stress-free, well, how much does this cost? Or what about this food? Or can I get in the shower? Or what about, are there ramps? How can I get in? Like, if you look at TJ, if he's able to do it, then any of you guys are able to do it. TJ, have you found that you feel less disabled when you're out in the field and you're hunting, going fast and all that? Yeah, exactly. It's like the outdoors. It's like a distraction. From like the struggles most disabled people go through. That just got like a almost like a blindfold. I just like to be outside. 
as much as I can. And of course, there's healthy distractions and unhealthy distractions. Exactly. And I would say that this is definitely a healthy distraction. You know, there's plenty of people that I'm sure you even know that have, you know, toxic distractions. This is something that is therapy, not just for the body, but for the mind and for the spirit. With Disabled Outdoorsman USA, TJ and I kept the name vague because we feel like it's not just hunting, it's fishing, it's kayaking, it's biking, it's hiking. It's anything in the outdoors that, you know, can you can put your mind, your mentality on something else just for that, you know, hour, two hour window. And it really can give you, you know, that therapeutic thing that you need to get your mind in the right place. Anything in the outdoors that you like to do, you know, Disabled Outdoorsman eventually is going to have, you know, the accommodations for you to go and do that. So right now we're talking to a guy in South Carolina, a guy in Utah, who's actually the first hunter that we brought down, Sidney Smith, who's a double amputee, and the individual from New Mexico. So we want to have different branches in different states, and they can have the services that we provide here in Texas. We want to have people with disabilities, you know, working with disabled outdoorsmen because we feel like if people such as TJ and yourself, you know, you're confident and you're distilled, you know, you accept, you know, what's going on, you can help, you know, other people that may not be as accepting or maybe they're just going through that injury. And uh, it's not just, you know, to help out the disabled, but the able bodies as well because once people start seeing, you know, people with disabilities out there, given that they're all determined and motivated, you know, I might just get that next guy up off the couch to, you know, make society better as a whole. You know, TJ, you have a very different perspective. Like yours, as time goes on, gets worse, yeah. right? It's, it's degenerative. Wow, this is awful, but I'm still going to make the best out of it, no matter what. That's inspiring for even someone like me, because here I am sitting here like I got my hands and I can stand and walk a little bit and I'm on two wheels and like you give me perspective and I'm like I appreciate that a lot. And it's not in some weird kind of like, mm -hmm. you're so inspirational. <laughs> and you know, like I, I, I hate that. But I mean, even honestly, like I'll, I'll be talking to some other my pair of friends and it's like, you want a dose of reality check? Go hang out with a quad for a day. You could cook and clean and bathe yourself, but you're just too depressed to do it. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, no idea. No idea. Yeah, and the cool thing about TJ too is his, you know, his mentality. He really just likes to watch other people have a good time. Yeah, so he likes, you know, people that, you know, such as yourself that have never came and experienced, you know, a trip like this. He gets more of a kick out of, you know, watching you and watching you have fun than you probably do. And that's, yeah, and that's the cool thing about it because, I mean, he talks about it for months, you know, when you leave. I mean, you're, it's a brotherhood, sisterhood, you know, it's a, it's a community that we're trying to build of just a good force, you know. That's one of the things that I have found to be one of my favorite things about being a person with a disability, especially a wheelchair user, is I have an automatic in with anyone else who's rolling around on wheels. I mean, there's just the stories that they share. It's pretty, com it's pretty compelling. I mean, any disability, you know, amputee, you know, quadriplegic in a wheelchair, you know, anything that, you know, you may be suffering from, men, women, children, you know, cancer patients, we're open. Disabled outdoorsmen isn't, you know, biased against any disability. Hopefully, you know, we can get them back into the outdoors and they can really see, you know, the bigger side of things, understand that, hey, my life's not over. If I would have been able to have that mindset in the beginning, which was my life's not over, it's just changed directions. Yeah. I think I would have. Yeah. I think it would have been a lot easier. Yeah. Um, it's hard to do, but I have this desire to show off things like the Disabled Outdoorsman USA, so that when people are laid up in the hospital, they get to see these videos and go, "Oh, cool, it's not over yet." Yeah. If if I knew that equipment existed, if I knew there was a place I could go use it, it would have changed my trajectory. My future was not only taken from me, I had no clear vision of what my new life would look like, and I only had stereotypes in my own head based on what I saw on movie and film and television and usually like old people, and it, and it pushed me into this really bad depression yeah. and and now after all the trials and tribulations that I've been through and all the peaks and all the valleys that 30 year old Richard as an able body probably wouldn't be in such a good position as 30 year old disabled Richard you know mm. regardless of all the trials and the tribulations and the pain and the daily struggles all the maintenance we have to deal with just by being alive and I think I'm still you know in a better place things like disabled outdoorsman USA help me do that but I mean, this is a unique opportunity because I mean, I know there's other hunting adaptive folks in the disabled community, but there's costs involved with that. I want to go, but who's got an extra 2,500 bucks? I'm on a fixed income. I'm trying to pay my, for my medicine next week. You guys are like, don't worry about it. Just get here, get a plane ticket. We got you. So Weston, I've gone hunting before as an able body. It was also more than 10 years ago, so I hardly remember it. Tell me a little bit about what we're going to be doing today as far as hunting out of my wheelchair. 
Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get you fitted for the right, you know, shotgun that's going to be accessible for you. So weight and, you know, how easily you can swing it from side to side is going to be very important, especially with the dove that are here because they're coming in pretty quick. So we're going to get you set up with the right rifle. We're going to get you set up, you know, in a spot, some shade, probably under a little cover of a tree. That way they don't see you when they're coming in. About 445, they're going to start coming in to the fields, to the sunflower fields to eat. And so you're going to be shooting them coming in and then you're going to be shooting them when they're coming out about 6.45, 7 o'clock. So after that, clean the birds, plop them on the grill for some appetizers, make some dove poppers, you know, really share the experience. Oh, make it happen. Sun's almost set, we're cleaning up. This day was really fun. I managed to get six birds, which was really cool. First time I've ever been hunting back in the wheelchair again. This is an experience I'll never forget. I'm so excited I was able to do this today. Right, we got all of our doves here and Wes is going to show me how to clean them. So after we clean the doves, we actually turn them into these really delicious jalapeno poppers that we eat before dinner. This is such a Texas thing. TJ, Weston, thank you so much for having us out today. I mean, we had such a good time. Tell us, where can we find you online? Yeah, man, so you can find us on our Instagram and our YouTube, Disable Outdoorsman USA. If you want to come on a trip like this, check the link below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like. And if you're new here, please be sure to subscribe. If you want to know more about what's going on here at Wilson Walking, Andrew and I have a behind the scenes podcast, link down below as well. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next one. Keep the heart. Oh! <laughs> <laughs>